What's up everybody, Destroyer here, welcome back to another cast of the Rise of Witch King, patch 2.2, version 6. Today we have a 2v2 on Buckland to take a look at. So let's jump in. I oh, forgot to turn my shaders off. Oh well, it's a little foggy. No big deal. We have Sang as goblins in the top right. And his ally for this matchup. Also goblins, Liam666, Satan himself. And the opposing team, we have Platt. Probably Platino, but that's just speculation, of course. So, Platt is a uh, elves there. And uh, another elf, Samurai, who uh, I know likes to play very trollily, if that's a word, <laughs> which is not. So, we got a double elf versus a double goblin. That's interesting. All right. Well, let's see if who triumphs, good or evil, goblins or elves, in this match. And, of course, I'm casting on the HD edition Alpha of Rise of Witch King. So, there's that as well. In case you were wondering why my units look different than yours. That is the reason. Okay. We have... Uh, ah, there it is. A green passage start. Going out for Platt. So he's going to go Cav against Goblins. Which could work out. We'll see. Samurai, on the other hand, is going to go Standard Lorian Warrior start. Against his opponent, who is going to Spiderling start. So saying he's going to have very fast, very nimble... Spiderlings. And Liam is going to go the standard Goblin start. So both uh, both teams have somebody doing something different than the old barrack start. And then the other player is doing the barrack start. Basically. But they are doing it against each other as well. Does anyone know? No, everyone has Rally Call or War Chance. So no one is spied or anything. Meaning no one knows that like this player is going Cav. No one has no idea, except for obviously these players. So we'll see how that works out. But the Spiderlings will help actually counter the uh, Rivendell Lancers. Not in a 1v1 scenario, but definitely help out. Lorian Warriors, also not very good against Spiderlings, unfortunately. For them. But against the Goblin Warriors, these are going to work very nicely. And they actually stop you from capturing the outpost there. So... There is the double war chance, rally call rather. Saying, thinking twice about sending the spiraling army after the lancers. There is the war chant on his things. And now they'll start dying off as they do. And won't be able to get away from the spiraling, so he has to really stay and fight. But at least he'll have to help with the Lorian warriors, but unfortunately for them, Liam has brought some goblins in. And the elves. Probably not. Well, I guess they would win this engagement. Because there's two battalions of Lorian warriors there. I didn't see. At least one of them I didn't see. We got some Lorian archers on the field. For samurai. I really wish I would have turned my shears off. <laughs> it's a lot easier to see things. Without this white haze across everything. I kind of have to zoom in a little bit more just to get to be less noticeable. I'm pretty sure that's being removed from all maps, or at least majority of maps, except for the ones that need it for the next version, which would be freaking great. That's what 1.9 did, and I, I like their maps much better because of it. I, I just don't find this white fog as immersive as other people. I like to be able to see what's going on. Let's put it that way. All right, Liam's got a nice setup here for Goblin Barracks's caves, rather. Same thing, really with a nice tunnel in the back to send him out and then pull him out wherever he needs him. Assuming he has a tunnel there. This is indeed very useful. Platt having a mere Galadriel there to heal up his cab, which is always advisable. And we have some Lindens to counter these Spiderlings. I think Lindens are probably the best choice to counter Spiderlings, to be honest, for Elves. Because not only can they catch them, but they can also kill them at range. Which is nice. Though it does take a, a few arrows to kill them. <laughs> Fortunately, those Lancers did fall to that, so that's unfortunate. If he can be placed by Liam, I think he wants a rally, or a war chant rather, probably. Is the one ready to be used? His own? Oh, I think he's telling him to get his, his stuff on his units. Ah. 
That is going to be one big war chant. Well, if you wait any longer, they're going to miss their opportunity. There he goes. He's decided it's time. So we have a massive amount of goblins flooding in against the elven forces. There's quite a few. It looks like most of Liam's guys are kind of just ignoring the uh, enemy. Going straight to the base. Which could net them some, uh, some nice kills. Some lanterns are being brought through though. As long as they don't hit a giant clump of goblins like that. Which caused them to take a lot of damage in return. They slowed down and got hit with poison blades. If they hit them one battalion at a time, like they could swing around, clip a battalion, they actually do very well against Goblin Warriors. Well, those are Lindens as well, actually. So they can trample and shoot. I think Lindens are very, very useful. Unfortunately, not invincible by any means. And they do drop fairly quickly to the Spiderlings. Spiderlings, a bit. Arguably, a bit too good at countering Gav in some cases. That was meant to be their use, but at the same time, it may have made him a bit too strong at it. So they will be, uh, I think they're receiving a debuff or something of some kind in the future. Nothing severe, but maybe enough to make them not super OP. We got Haldir on the field for Samurai. Haldir's a good choice against Goblin Warriors. Of course, because he has the splash damage with his swing. Also, he gives leadership to his, his friends around him. And it looks like both ho Goblin Hordes are going in for an attack. Against the base of Samurai. If they get that man of goblins around his fort, that would be very bad for them. But it looks like he will actually get around this. As you see, this is the reason why. The fort won't take much damage, but the little basic barracks will. Platt doing as much damage as he can, trying to bring down goblins without getting his guys caught and killed. Also, Platt has a pretty decent sized army now in the middle. Samurai's going to lose some of his stuff here for sure. But he'll. Nothing he shouldn't be able to recover from once his ally cleans up here with him. Health here is level 3 now. At level 6, he gets his leaderships. So I'm sure he can't wait for that. And all you hear is the death scream of goblins. So many. <laughs> Looks like Liam accidentally sending him next to the cave troll. Liam set up some sentry towers. Interesting. Could be useful. I suppose. If you put some goblin warriors in there. Or goblin archers, rather. He's like wave his whole thing the cave troll with goblin warriors. I mean, there's... There's better ways to deal with a cave troll. But, I guess... <laughs> if you're willing to sacrifice enough lives, you'll get the job done. I think it's the Russian World War II philosophy, isn't it? <laughs> Send as many troops at the enemy as possible. Never mind their lives. A painful, uh, painful philosophy for sure. All right. Let's see how the bases the goblins are looking. Liam's got a couple. He's got a spider pit and a burrows expansion there. Ian Sayang's base. He's got one, two, three, four, five goblin caves and an upgraded spider pit. So you can actually bring out spider riders if you so desired, which could be good. We also have a fissure being thrown up here from Liam. Cheeky little forward fissure behind some towers. Could be good if they need a fissure. Could go for half trolls. Could go for cave trolls. Could go for giants. All three are pretty good options. Also, of course, the uh, fire drake roots. He's feeling spicy. The goblins are trying to navigate their way around the elves. Which is probably fair, because the elven mist is there, they probably can't even see them right now. As they're probably stealthed. Or maybe not, I don't know. Ah, someone was trying to throw down ent boots. Was he trying to get ents? He was indeed. I don't think he's going to be able to set the ent He might. But I don't think so. There's a lot of goblins there, clumps, I'm saying. Although, clumping same time. Makes them all easier to kill at once. 
And indeed, they do save the Entmoot, and the Ent will arise. And of course, Ents are incredibly good against Goblin Warriors, because they can literally walk over them and kill them. And the Goblin Warrior cannot do very much at all. half Tron Marauders, on the other hand, is another story. They will be able to counter the Ent quite nicely. Alright, Platt's pushing out here against Liam now. He's got a lot of Lindens and Archers. Not a whole lot of actual melee troops to destroy things. He has like one battalion of pikes to be able to destroy things, it looks like. It's not the best. It does look like Saiyang has Scavenger, though. Liam does not need Scavenger now. I'm pretty sure Scavenger shares between Goblin players. Or even... I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So I think two players going Scavenger is redundant and unnecessary. It's kind of like two men of the West getting a marketplace. It's not going to benefit both of them and stack or anything. It's just going to... One of them's going to be active and the other one's going to be wasted. But if I'm wrong and that's not how Scavenger works, do let me know. <laughs> I'm pretty, fairly sure it is. My facts are always check, uh, check later kind of facts, you know? Because <laughs> I tend to forget things. It's part of being old. Although I'm not actually that old. Believe it or not. I'm just forgetful. Alright. In comes Liam's army against Samurai's forces. And we have a Wildman summon in there as well from Liam. That's his 10 power. Definitely a good one against Elves. Summoning Wildman in the Archer line of the Elves is always, always nice. And that is the power of the Ant right there. Samurai employing it. Walking over Goblin Warriors. I definitely advise uh, Ents against Goblin Warrior spam. They are incredible. It allows you to take a lot of casualties. That's not exactly the way I wanted to word that. <laughs> take a lot of lives without taking a lot of casualties. I don't think you'd build Ents if it allowed you to take a lot of casualties. To be fair. You've got a level 3 green pasture. Of course, they don't get anything at level 3 other than... Uh, Production speed boost and an arrow tower on top, which is useful, and more health. So definitely uh, doesn't hurt to go to level three. Ooh, there's a lot of goblins there. Seems to be making the replay chug. <laughs> Lag in the replay. That's when you know it's legit. Very, very nice charge through though. Didn't lose too much in the process and killed a fair amount of goblins. Lorian archers are doing a good job. Taking it lots and lots of goblins. Oh, well, tons more goblins are appearing. And now goblin archers are appearing the fire arrows as well. Good choice in the fire arrows, I'd say, from Liam. We'll do a lot more damage as well as be able to deal with the Ents if they uh, start focus firing the Ent when they get into combat with it. I feel like Liam's making some good choices here. Although he's going to have a difficult time breaking the, uh, the Ent Archer line here, definitely. I feel like one of the Goblin players needs to get like three battalions of Spider Riders or something and just, just go YOLO through there. Or else they're going to have a tough time breaking it. Because you could send Goblin Warriors at an Elven army for days. I don't think you're going to break it as easily as you think you might. But if he keeps focus firing this Ent, he already has set it on fire. So it will burn to death now. An ability I wish the builder had was to be able to put out the fire on the Ent. I think that'd be really good. Because there's literally an ability called Extinguish Fire, or whatever. <laughs> I can actually double check that. Yeah, it is. It says Structure Damage, of course. But, I mean, that could be edited, of course. If it made it to uh, put out Ents, that would make sense, you know? Ents are one of the few units that actually catch fire. I feel like it'd be a nice uh, nice touch to be able to put them out with your builder. Or maybe casting Flood over them. I know it sounds silly. That'd be kind of neat. I gotta get rid of this beacon. It's just staking around for no reason. We got Azog out for Saiyang, who's also got Spider Riders as well. That'll definitely help. 
not only with the uh, elven archers, but the cav as well. Spider Riders is pretty alright against that. Liam's got himself, of course, upgrades. Nicely, of course. Goblins get fire arrows at level 1, so he didn't have to upgrade for that. It's the only faction to actually get fire arrows at level 1, pretty sure. Yeah, it is. It is indeed, and it's very it's useful for goblins. As to where armor, sometimes not as much. Weapons, sometimes not as much, because you're relying on spam. You don't really want to upgrade your spam, generally speaking. Which is another thing I'm looking forward to in the new patch, is the cost of armor and weapons will be scaled to uh, reasonable levels for each faction. I can't speak too much to that, but I know it's going to be uh, better, I think. So obviously God Mortars won't have 250 cost for weapon blades and armor blade uh, upgrades. Because uh, crypting a Goblin Warrior Battalion with 500 resources worth of upgrades is ridiculous. And you only do that if you're really living lavishly. So having that scaled it would be great. Ooh, we got Eagle Summon here. From Platt. This potential will do some damage. He's going to go for the level 3 tunnels of Liam, which is wise. Taking out level 3 farms in any scenario is always advisable. Oh dear, we got a worm summon here. Summoned in by Sayang. That'll take care of the Ents easy peasy. Luckily, he got one breath off before dying, and that managed to kill two of the Ents. The other one actually got away, though. One of the Ents was Treebeard, though. So unfortunately for Samurai, his Ents are pretty much toast. The Giant's doing well enough against the Ent. Although the Ent does pretty well against the Giant as well. I feel like the Ent does more damage to the Giant than the Giant does to the Ent. And that's probably how it is. But look how long this Ent is taking to die. Now that Azog's here, he might die quicker, but Azog is actually going to die to some Pikes. Oh! If Haldir was paying attention, he could have sniped the... Ah, oh, too bad. How they should have been shooting Azog. How they're trying to bring down the giant, though, which is fair. I don't think he saw that uh, Azog was about to die. There's a golden arrow almost. I don't see golden arrow very often in replays, to be honest. Even though Howther's a very, very common hero. Rarely do I actually see that. So, wouldn't mind seeing that. God, I hate Azog. <laughs> Look at the way he runs. His model's so bad. And of course, he hasn't been done by the Rise of the Witch King HD Edition Alpha either yet, so... Although, he's got an HD texture from the HD texture patch, but that's given a green face, oddly enough. He still looks pretty hideous. Because you can't polish a turd, no matter how hard you try. But I am looking forward to the reskin and remodel of Azog that will be coming in the future for the HD Edition for Rise of the Witch King. Curious to see what they'll do with Azog. I mean, if they went the route of give him the Pale Orc Azog, somehow you'd have to fix his voice files, you know, because he sounds like a scrawny little shit, so I'd... I don't know how you do that. For a thing that only changes the, uh, the look of things. Treebeard's gonna get out of there, although he could kill a lot of goblins if he just turned around. <laughs> he really should. Builder fleeing for his life. Let's see how Platt's doing. He seems to be pushing in pretty aggressively here against Liam. As are getting a lot of kills here. He's very wounded though. But it seems the Lindens are doing quite well over here. We also have Merkwoods on the field. He's being surrounded and slaughtered though by the Spiderling Summon and Goblins. He should probably get his uh, Lindens out of here before he no longer has any. I think he's thinking the same thing. So he's sending them back. What the hell? <laughs> Platt is literally building Mallard trees in Liam's base. I don't know if he's trolling him or what. Holy crap. I wouldn't say they're doing that well to the point where they can start building Mallard trees in the enemy base. Samurai definitely 
not in too good of a spot, to be honest. He's probably got very few trees. Sayang has 635 of 875. Here's what he has power wise. He's got Worm, Scavenger, Bats, Tain Land, 9 power points. Samurai, the bottom right elf, has himself summoned and allies ready to be used. Cloud Break, which already has been used, even though I didn't notice somehow. Uh, Elven Wood, Heal, Rally Call, 2 power points, 387, 700, so he's doing pretty good. Uh, Platts, wait. Right, Samurai is doing pretty good, because he gets some command from him. He's actually got more farms out than uh, Platt does. Somebody got the King Throne Duel. I just heard him. King Throne Duel in the HD edition, of course. Looks like Hobbit Throne Duel. To some degree. Pretty sweet. But, of course, in 2.02, he does not have a toggle mount ability. Like, fuck. <laughs> not really something King Throne Duel needs, to be honest. Oh, these Fire Drake Brews, a great counter to the Ents. Good choice for saying there. Assuming those are sayings. They are, because orange. Oh, we got a flood. Who's this player? Platt. Platt has summoned summon the flood. Ready to be used somewhere. I'm going to keep it on his spectator view so we can see it. And of course we got Trouting Mist, Eagles, Heal, or Alley Call for power points. There it is. An end summon somewhere. But wait. Usually Ant Summon is in the back of someone's base, but I don't feel like it has been in this case. We will defend the Elven lands. Maybe use it defensively? We come from Mirkwood. I legit don't know where he summoned his ends. I'll never know. <laughs> well, Platt has Flood ready to be used. I'm just going to go back to observing here, everybody. Catch it as we catch it. Sounds like Azog has fallen down. Back to the depths. Trading Miss is a really good open power. Very good. Debuffs the enemy, of course, and gives you camouflage. What more do you want as an elf? If you flood here, it shut down Leon pretty nicely, but at the same time, maybe not the best use. Hard to say. So the Leons now have heavy armor upgrades. They got that nice golden look to them. As beef meat tradition. That's one thing that's nice about the HD edition. When you upgrade the units, they don't change off their golden look like the uh, base game has. So you still know, visibly, out of the granites, when you have upgrades. Which is very nice. We're all used to that, so it's nice that it doesn't change. But I feel like Samurai is in danger of losing the game here. Oh dear. It looks like Balrog is being summoned by Liam. That's always fun. Very nice. Platt still hasn't used his Flood. I wonder if Flood kills Balrog. I know Avalanche does. Flood? Not so sure. If I had to guess, I'd say no. But that's... I don't know. Not many players use Flood on Balrog, so I have no idea. But this Balrog is poised to do a lot of damage. I mean, one Fire Whip does over half the Ant Moot. He's going to be able to finish that off nicely. Balrog's just so destructive. My god. It is definitely the most OP power in the game. There's no if, ands, or buts. Watcher is also pretty nice. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's the Flood Watcher. Oh boy. Well, both armies killing each other there. So that's going to cause a stalemate in that region for a little bit. But it does look like Samurai did save his fortress. What level is this Thranduil? Or is that Thranduil? That's Thranduil. Oh no, Thranduil is about to die. Hopefully he has heal. He has Legolas as well. Haldir does have Golden Arrow. Which does stun. So it is pretty useful. It's like a little mini cloud break. 
Uh, some inspired living allies also here to uh, help out. Balrog has despawned, but not before doing a metric shit ton of damage to Plat Space. Another Spiderling summon in. Oh dear. The Chlorophyndel's here. If you're not, the Elf in Silver Armor has arrived. And he has cut the Spiderlings down. Will he be enough, though? I don't know. I feel like the goblins are going to overwhelm the elves here pretty shortly. Honestly, Elven Archer Hero is not the greatest against uh, goblins, I feel. Because of the single target ability of, like, Thranduil. Thranduil is great for taking out Azog. But for goblin warriors, I mean, not really. I think I'd much rather have a Glorfindel to, uh, melee fight them than have Thranduil to, uh, shoot them dead. Because he's much less tanky as well than Glorfindel. So if he gets caught out, Thranduil will get killed fairly quickly. There's a defensive eagle summon here for Platt, who really, literally has nothing in his base. Around his fort is pretty devoid of life. Except for over here, there's a nice Noldor statue. Which is, of course, the HD edition thing. Pretty sweet. And then we have a Nolan tree there. So he's got very little. As his samurai isn't in too much of a better shape, his fort is very, very weakened. We have a barracks there. And a tree, and a tree. But, forces of saying are pushing in. And it looks like the forces of Liam are pushing in on Platt. And I think this will be GG here for Platt, definitely. And in turn, the same goes for Sayang. That giant should be able to finish off the fort. Platt has been defeated, indeed. So, that leaves him. Down goes his fort. And unfortunately, the glorious elven hero army not going to be enough to save the day here. Although Thranda and Legolas do look awesome, I will admit. Especially Legolas. I like Legolas' armor in the hollow. There you go. Victory for the goblins. Very cool. Good to see uh, goblins crush the elves. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, good match. Pretty, uh, a little bit back and forth. Pretty good action. So it's not bad. I enjoyed. Hopefully you all enjoyed as well. So, there you go. I will see you guys in the next cast of the Rise of Witch King, patch 2.2. See you all next time.